so they do follow a similar theme, the setup is exactly the same, except one is going under the skin, the other is going into the muscle. So we'll start by calculating our dosage. So for your patient, I'm going to use Rover, he's a 20 kilogram dog. So your scenario is that you will have the weight given to you. So 20 kilogram dog, and we're going to, in this circumstance, be giving methadone. So we're going to be doing the intramuscular first, and then we'll quickly do the subcutaneous. So um, the intramuscular injection will require a syringe and needle, but as well as your calculation. It doesn't matter if you do your calculation first, um, in the sense of wanting to syringe, assemble your needle syringe, but best practice is to do your calculation first to ensure your needle and syringe stays as sterile as possible. So initially um, we'll do our calculation. So we're going to have um, either a mil per kilo dosage given to you or a mix per kg um, dosage given to you. So you calculate as appropriate. So for this patient, we're gonna do the mix per kg. So we've been given here um, 0.05 mix per kg. So we'll do 20 multiplied by 0.05 mix per kg and then we will then divide that by the 10 mg per mil. So uh, that would be 0.02 mils. I will check that, I've just done that in my head, but I will check that calculation. <laughs> But for the argument's sake, let's say it's 0.02 mils. Um, so that's the amount that we're going to be drawing up. So for our patient, um, for this circumstance, we're going to do 0.02 mils. So I've recalculated with a calculator, guys. Um, <laughs> ill advised to not do that one. And it's actually 0.1 mils, so that seems like a little bit more practical number. So we're going to do 0.1 milliliters. So we can then go on to constructing our needle and syringe. So key things is to select the right one. So we check for expiry, we check the size. So I've got a two and a half mils here and a one milliliter here. So I'll go for the 0.1. And then needle size is always something that people are unsure about. You will be provided with a range. Um, usually best practice, because we have have a large dog here we're probably going to use a, um, a blue needle um, 5 8 uh, 23 gauge blue for this injection obviously if this was a cat or a smaller patient you might want to use an orange so drawing up with the green and then giving with blue so we'll start off by assembling so we want to make sure that we're not um, pushing through the plastic starting off with our green needle so opening green needle as appropriate this one is a little bit stuck down because I've got it Earlier, so I'm just gonna. Oh no, this is where it doesn't open, and this might happen in your exam. The key is to not panic. <laughs> Emily, did you give me a jinx? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All the faults, real life here. So, yeah, opening up as such, inserting as such, and removing the air. So, we're keeping that end level nice and clean. Now, your um, bottles. So, your bottles, you will be provided with two bottles. I'm aware that these are, I'll try and keep them this way so the brands are kept on you kind of know which of these come from. Obviously you will have two bottles, one of which will be in date and the correct drug. The other might be the same drug, which is correct for what you need. However, it might have gone out of date. <laughs> That's quite funny. May the odds be in your favor. <laughs> it's appropriate. Um, uh, so they may be out of date, uh, or the bottle might have expired. So just checking your dates as well. So we're gonna choose the most appropriate. I'm just gonna go for this one for now. So choose your bottle, pause the, pause the video. Thank you. So we have to do our spirit swab first. So a bit of spirit on the cotton wool. And then we want to just make sure we clean the bottle off. Don't have a clinical waste bin due to the size of the table, but we will put that away in clinical waste. Take our needle and syringe. And I don't have any liquid in here because it's an expired bottle, but you will in the exam. Pop in and draw up as appropriate. So we're drawing up to our 0.1. So you will get an air bubble. I always find it better to draw up completely empty and draw back again because that allows you for to have the medicine in there and then we're going to draw up to 0.1. Key thing now is to obviously not touch the needle and remove it down so pulling it down you can use either the lid of the sharp spin or a pair of artery forceps pause um, you can use the lid of those I don't have my artery forceps with me today so I'm going to demonstrate the lid but if you did have an pair of artery forceps you can simply press it over and pull them off as such pause and with the bin we take our cap off as such and then that leaves us with our clean surface and then once again opening your needle accordingly and appropriately placing on top and then pushing the plunger back up to the quantity that you have calculated so 0.1 placing that into the kidney dish for the examiner to check 
they will then provide you with an empty syringe with air in it so don't panic there's nothing in there obviously if 50 odd students were doing the exam with uh, water you'd end up with a very soggy patient so they give you a syringe full of air so it's usually somewhere between 0.5 millilitres to a millilitre so I'll pop it at 0.5 for now. Next step would be to make sure you have an assistant to hold your patient so um, we would ordinarily ask your examiner to restrain your patient for the purposes of today due to lack of people um, we're just going to assume that the patient is restrained but you'll always ask your examiner to restrain your patient we're going to do intramuscular first and then subcutaneous okay so again just shuffle your waist over to one side to give you some space lack of space on this table so your patient then so you will have someone restraining at the head end just asking them to place a hand on either side of the head or the shoulders making sure they're restrained suitably um, approach a patient like they're with you so making sure that they chat to them and sort of make up a name if you need to intramuscular injection sites we can go for the lumbar muscle on these dogs it's about there on the lumbar bearing in mind you've sort of got a thorax here or alternatively you can use a quadricep muscle which again would be sort of the front of the forelimbs uh, the hind limb sorry so it's up to you which one you choose it doesn't matter um, most tend to go for lumbar just due to the fact of the angle of the leg and things that's absolutely fine so if you were doing the lumbar obviously we've got our fresh needle ready to go we remove the cap pinch the muscle tap on the muscle 90 degrees draw back no blood inject so that's the lumbar muscle obviously the same would apply for your quadriceps so we've removed the cap pinch the quadricep touch for the muscle 90 degrees draw back and inject so either one is appropriate subcutaneous it's the scruff likewise removing your cap bit of a tent it's hard on these dogs just due to their <laughs> stitching so come a bit lower give yourself a bit of a tent coming in inject, draw back and give the medication and obviously rubbing at whatever site that you used. Again, I don't have artery forceps so I'm just going to use the lid. Needle off, syringe in pharmaceutical waste, waste in just domestic waste. And then the final step, just making sure that you've got everything, is making sure you note everything in your control book. We have a posh one here. Um, you'll likely just have a printout form or a piece of paper with appropriate bits and pieces. So having a look inside here you've got various different columns you'll all be familiar with the version or of this um, so your patient name for example would be in here um, time of day quantity disposed of so 0.05 or 0.1 and your signature it will be far simpler in your exam you will have um, essentially the date patient details quantity given um, you'll also have the wastage and obviously a signature point um, for your subcutaneous injection you will have a hospital chart so it won't necessarily be your controlled drugs so for your intramuscular controlled drugs your subcutaneous will be a hospital chart very similar principle whereby you've got patient name a quantity given um, and then you might have a comment on how they received the injection were they well behaved and things like that so we go through in those stages if you're happy with that making sure all of your waste is disposed of and you're happy with everything making sure you put the right quantity based on calculation in your records that should be you done